Well, hello and welcome to a new advanced listening practice lesson. It is a pleasure to welcome you back if you've been with us for a while, and hello if you're new. As always, at the beginning of these, I'd like to say, if you're new to the channel, please watch some of the previous videos we've made because I will be speaking much more quickly in this series. So in order to build up an understanding or the ability to understand what I'm saying, the fast vocabulary words and the blended speech I'll be using, because I'll be speaking at native or faster than native speed at some times, I'd like you to not be frustrated by this video. So please go and watch some of those other videos first. But if you're ready for this video, let's begin. I'm actually really excited, uh, even though, you know, I, I kind of I want to apologize. Some people have said I look a little bit tired and, well, I'm human. I get a little bit tired, I suppose. Even my wife has said something like that. She says I'm working too hard and I'm also trying to take care of my daughter at the same time. So if my face looks a little bit sleepy, I've actually had, you know, this is kind of a problem I have, I've, uh, I've had ever since I was a little kid. And I kind of I have this regular expression like this where I'm actually in a really good mood, but I just, you know, I just I look like this. So anyway, that's how I look. It's very comfortable and relaxing for me, but I know I got to like, I don't know, like adjust my face for these videos to wake up and put on a smile, even though I've got a big smile inside. So I do apologize if I don't look like I'm so excited. Uh, it's because I'm actually quite tired because I've got, again, the baby. I've de I'm dealing with Aria and trying to help take care of her, but also all of the really cool things we're working on. So I'm not actually sleeping as much as I'd like to be because I'm really so excited to be working on all these projects. We've got the new app coming out soon and we're redoing our website. We're also uh, about to release a whole bunch of guides and I wanted to talk about one of the guides that we're going to be releasing in this video. So anyway, uh, what I'll be talking about today is how to learn 10,000 words in English. And uh, not only just learning a whole bunch of words, but how to use them without thinking so you can actually speak automatically and not have to take time like, ah, I want to say this and how do I do that? Uh, so that's what I'd like to be talking about today. Anyway, uh, so it's something that's actually quite a big and a fairly advanced topic because we're talking about the mind and psychology and this isn't about like, hey, how can we have a like a flashcard try to teach us in a certain way and we're going to use a program and it's like a really high tech thing. Uh, so I'm not really a, a flashcard guy. That's not how I learned Japanese. And when I did try to learn that way, I couldn't remember much. So what I'd like to talk about today is actually a different way of learning a lot of vocabulary and I won't talk about the whole thing. I'll be going into a lot more detail in the guide uh, that's called Learn 10,000 Words that's coming out soon. It's going to be a free guide and I'm really excited to release it. Uh, but anyway, because it's kind of a longer thing, I don't want to talk about the whole thing and all the different parts of it in this video. But uh, I'd really just like to talk about the core idea of this and how to learn vocabulary. So if you've been paying attention watching the latest couple of advanced listening practice videos I've been releasing, I talk a lot about the mind. I actually talk about a lot about like the mind and psychology in general. Um, and I think it's such an important thing because when I first started learning Japanese, it was the traditional approach I was trying to use and none of it worked. And after I thought about it for a while, I mean, I had studied, you know, philosophy and psychology back in college and there's a kind of a weird thing that happens in your mind. You're kind of learning it one way, the traditional way. And as you're learning, it doesn't seem like it's actually working the way it should work. It's like, well, I'm trying to learn a language, but it doesn't actually work this way. It seems like it's going against the way my mind would like me to work. And I talk to students about this all the time. Your mind is different from a computer. You are not good at taking a list of words and trying to remember them. I can't even remember what I had for lunch yesterday. Can you remember what you had for dinner three nights ago or even what movie you saw or something like that? Uh, maybe that's just because I'm getting old. But in general, it's because the human mind is just not that design. You know, it's not it's not a computer. And so we have to take that into account. So when this, uh, this is actually a really great phrase, excuse me, to take something into account. It just means to think about something uh, and to use that information when we're trying to make a decision about something. So if I have to like, you know, if I'm thinking about going on a picnic, I have to take the weather into account. I have to take the weather into account. It just means I have to think about the weather or I have to consider 
the weather. Anyway, when you're thinking about learning a language because it's such a mental process, I mean, that's really what it is. You're actually using your, your mind to, you know, direct how you're going to move your physical body, how you're moving your mouth and your body and your hands and everything else. So you're developing muscle memory in the same way that you're learning a, uh, an instrument or learning to play a sport, like a certain movement, like dunking a basketball or kicking a soccer ball. Uh, but it all begins with the mind. And if you learn how to use the mind properly, then you're much more likely to remember all the things you want to remember, but you've got to do it in the right way. Now, the reason I brought up before in this video earlier uh, about the previous advanced listening practice lessons is because I've been talking recently about the mind and, you know, thinking about things in the right way as you're learning. Uh, and this just means, you know, beginning with the understanding that you have, uh, it's your responsibility to get fluent. Like I can do whatever I can to help and other teachers, you know, other people like that that are trying to help you improve your English or whatever it else it is. Uh, but ultimately, it's your responsibility. And then you have to stumble forward. Forward, you have to continue to move forward without worrying about making mistakes because that's part of the process and hopefully I was able to explain that. But one of the things I was talking about recently and it's also something I mentioned uh, a little while ago in a mail where I was talking to, uh, to some of my private students and I was talking about, uh, this is an idea from marketing, and uh, actually I think I spoke more about this in the uh, the business, uh, it's called the, 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 lang the, the Business of Teaching. I've got too many different like video series on this channel, but anyway, it's called The Business of Teaching, and it's talking about being first in the mind in a particular category. And this whole idea about marketing is the exact same thing when we're talking about language learning or especially building vocabulary. So here's the long and short of it. There's another great expression, the long and short of something. It means I'm going to just explain something very briefly, uh, but hopefully very quickly and may maybe, uh, well, I'm doing like a bad job of explaining it so far. But here's the, the, the nuts and bolts of it or the long and short of it. Uh, when you already have, uh, if you can kind of think about your mind as a, as like a sponge, and there's a whole bunch of holes in your mind for each particular category. So if I look at a pencil, I'm holding a pencil in my hand and I look at that, like there's already a, uh, there's like a hole in my mind uh, for the, the shape and the idea of a pencil, but also that's connected with the word pencil in English. So if I wanted to say like empizu, which is the Japanese word for pencil, or if I wanted to say it in French or German or Italian or something like that, I have to take out that idea uh, of pencil that automatically comes to my mind whenever I think about that thing or when I see a pencil. So this is the same thing that happens when you're talking about um, uh, like being in first in mind or being top of mind, as people like to call it when you're referring to a company, being top of mind when you think about something like I want to search for something on the internet, so I would go to Google, or if I'm thinking about a particular car, I would think about, you know, a particular car company or something like that. But everybody has these uh, spaces in their mind for particular things. Now what's tricky about language learning is that because you've spent most of your life learning uh, learning vocabulary in your particular language, you've already like filled all the holes with all the vocabulary that you're trying to learn uh, for you know many of like the new things you're learning, but also like the the older things. So I mean when you're learning a new language, you have to learn like the word for paper again or the word for pencil or the word for pen or or mailbox or other little things like that. And this is what becomes really, really tricky. Uh, and there's actually some some great ways to get around this, but what, what I'd like you to do is the same thing that I recommend other companies do in the business world, and this is what I talked about um, in that business of teaching video, is you don't want to try to become first in mind in the same category that's already taken up by something else. So what you have to do is go around that category, if that makes sense, by kind of tricking your mind into creating a new category for that thing and kind of working around to that idea. So hopefully this makes sense to you, but the, the basic idea is that when you're learning something new, if there's already something in that space, it's like trying to park a car in a garage and there's already a car in the garage. So it's going to be impossible to try to put that car in there. So what you have to do is build a second garage in a way in your mind such that you can park your car in that one and then it's much easier to remember things. So the reason you're able to speak and you know communicate without thinking in your native language is because you've got that car that's already right there. You don't have to do anything special to it. 
uh, that car is just like sitting there waiting for you and you can drive it whenever you want to and that's the regular vocabulary that you use for your own native language. But when you're learning English or any other language, again, you've got to build that second garage. It's, it takes a little bit more time, but if you build these second garages or third garages or whatever, it still enables you to integrate the language and be able to use it automatically without having to think and translate in your head, that kind of thing. So even though there are a couple of different ways to do this, and I'll be talking about that when I release this guide very soon, uh, again, it's called uh, learn 10,000 words. Uh, but what I'd like to do is just share one idea with that right now. Now, if you followed me for a really long time, you know that I'm a big fan of trying to multiply your language learning, whatever that is. Like, always start with the small things over here. Uh, so that way, when you get out here uh, to the bigger things, like these small changes, the little things that you do here, they have uh, big results over time in the future. And a big part of this is language learning for vocabulary building. So specifically learning different words that you want to learn, uh, learn for words. I'm like talking, you know, I'm not making any sense right now. But basically to, to build vocabulary words, instead of trying to memorize a whole bunch of words, what you really want to do, number one, uh, because of this garage problem you don't want to just try to learn like the new word for paper and the new word for all these other things it's going to be a little bit trickier to do that again because these spaces have already been taken up in your mind and your mind is really really strong for building memory it's like a magnet that like really pulls together but as soon as you try to unstick that it's almost impossible so you have to just use you have to work with the mind you have to work with your mind if you want it to remember things and the best way to do that is to be able to create again these new categories or new garages in your mind however you want to think about it uh, but anyway just one tip for that one part of this how to learn 10,000 words is to work about uh, or to learn prefixes and suffixes now as a regular word, again, we've got this garage here for a particular word uh, like bicycle. Now I'm going to learn the, the Japanese word for bicycle, which is jitensha. jitensha. Uh, and the Japanese word for bicycle, actually, if I try to learn it like, okay, I, I look at a bicycle and just automatically, because I've seen this for you know many, many years that I've been alive, when I look at a bicycle, I see the word and I hear the word bicycle in my mind. So I look at a bicycle, even in Japan, I look at a bicycle and I think, ah, like, I'm going to look at this at like, all right, it's it's a, it's a bicycle. I can't really think of the word jitensha in my mind uh, unless I think about it in a different way. Now, Japanese, the kind of idea of a prefix or a suffix, and these are little parts of words like the word bicycle. We've got by meaning two and cycle meaning circle. So a bicycle is two circles. Now, when you begin building words like this, you can actually take this. Not only are you making it easier for your mind to remember something by kind of taking the pieces of the word and, and literally building them in your mind because there probably aren't uh, spaces or these garages that are already filled in your mind for things like buy and try and cycle and other things like that that are pieces of words. So if you can't go into the garage for the actual word like bicycle, you can create a separate garage for something like buy and something like cycle, which is a little bit, it's kind of a tricky idea, but really you're, you're trying to take uh, the way your mind naturally works, but you have to work around that idea such that you can remember this thing. So anyway, in the case of jitensha, it means like a self-powered or a self-moving machine or a self-moving car or something like that, a self-moving vehicle. Uh, so when you're thinking about like, I'm moving the vehicle, I'm getting the idea of, ah, like a self-moving vehicle, jitensha, jitensha. Because when you're looking at prefixes and suffixes, again, the pieces of words like by and cycle, you're trying to, tr trying to get a deeper understanding of how the language works. So you don't want to go for the top understanding because your mind, again, it's already, it's already looking at those words and it's already filled those spaces in your mind. So you got to go deeper. Or again, there's other ways I'll explain to get around this problem in this new guide that I'll be releasing soon. But the whole point here is to try to get around uh, this garage that's already there. So you've got to take the time to build a separate garage or try to create a new category in your mind such that you can remember these things. So uh, when you're thinking about this, I just wanted to leave you with one idea for this video today. I want you to really think about prefixes and suffixes because again, not only is it a better way to remember these things and you're actually understanding the way the language works in the same way that I'm understanding uh, the pieces of Japanese to really understand words. So I'm not just, I'm not, I'm not just writing a flashcard like bicycle and then jitensha because it, there's, no, there's no connection there. It doesn't make any sense. And again, my, my categories are already filled up in my mind for those things. But if I 
look back and like, oh, okay, like the actual Chinese character that's written in Japanese uh, is like self-moving vehicle. Then I should be able to think like, ah, okay, how can I like, you know, do something like that? Or how can I, uh, how can I take an idea like that and make it easier for myself to remember, to create a new category in that way? But the other really cool thing about prefixes and suffixes is that you can mix and match them together and then you get to create all these different words because again you've created like a foundation of different prefixes and suffixes and you put this prefix and this suffix together uh, or this prefix and this suffix together or something like that and so you've multiplied your vocabulary learning so you're learning the pieces of things number one because it's easier to remember that way you're actually able to understand how the language works and number two uh, it, it multiplies your language learning ability so prefixes and suffixes again it's just it's such an important thing to learn for that reason and I'd like to leave you with that in this video so try to think about that and again like I bet you could go out today and find you know a couple of words that you already know and think like try to think about what that word actually means like not the definition of it but where the word came from what the word actually means and prefixes and suffixes are a really good part of that so I'll just leave you with uh, like a couple of them right now uh, so as an example we've got like bicycle now if we've got one wheel, what do you think that would be? If you don't know what the word for that is, and this is one of those things like when you're in a situation and you're trying to talk about something, but you're like, ah, I don't know the word for that thing. If you're a native speaker and you don't know the word for a particular thing, you try to make it up using the, the same kind of idea of prefixes and suffixes. And this is why I get so excited about this because this is what teaches you to think natively and fluently. So instead of thinking like, what's the correct thing? Think like, try to think like a native speaker and try to create that word in your mind. So if you don't know what a, uh, like, so in uh, Japanese, like a, uh, like a, like a bicycle, but it's only got one wheel and the little seat you sit on that is an ichirin sha. Uh, so this is a one wheel little like car, one wheel vehicle, something like that. So it makes perfect sense when you're, instead of trying to translate it like ichirinsha, 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 I'm trying to remember what it is. Uh, it's much easier if you actually try to understand what the word means. So breaking that word down into various pieces. So the, uh, the word for this in English is uni cycle unicycle so instead of a bicycle a bicycle and the pronunciation kind of changes but you understand where i'm going with this the one one cycle or one circle thing is a unicycle unicycle so that's where we get uni and you understand wow okay so if bicycle means two then unicycle means one then now we can take the idea of uni and use that for lots of other things and again this is that multiplication of vocabulary and this is why i want you to get, uh, get very excited about this as well so we've got unicycle university universe like all these things like unity coming together we're just taking bits and pieces of words hopefully i'm not going too quickly for you uh just because i get excited about this but it's a really important thing and you'll get much more excited about your language learning because you'll see how quickly you're starting to number one understand the language from a language learner's i guess a, a native language learner's perspective as opposed to a non-native speaker's perspective because you're understanding the language itself and not trying to translate it anymore Anyway, I don't want to give you too much, but do uh, look forward to this guide. It'll be coming out soon, along with a whole bunch of others. I'm actually releasing seven new guides. It's crazy. I'm doing a whole bunch of work on these things, plus the new app, plus other lessons that we're working on. So if I look a little bit tired, please forgive me. I'm doing this for you. Anyway, have a fantastic day. Uh, do like and share this video if you'd like to learn more. Uh, and in the comments below, drop a few uh, prefixes and suffixes. You know, just take your time and either share some that you know for other people or, you know, go out and research a few of them. You can find them anywhere, like go to any website and look up prefix and suffixes and just see how these things are connected together. It's a really amazing situation once you start learning in the native way, and then that will enable you to start using things without thinking and translating in context conversations. Well, I'm done talking for today. It's time to get back to work. I'm actually working on a couple of more things today, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. To continue learning, click on the link in this video to download Speak English Naturally, our free guide to speaking and sounding like a native English speaker. The guide reveals the three most important kinds of conversational English you must learn if you want to sound native and will help you experience instant improvement in your fluency and speaking confidence. To download your free guide on a mobile device, click on the link in the upper right of this video. To download your free guide from a computer, click on the link in the lower right of this video. I look forward to seeing you in the guide.